services are usually written about six weeks ahead of time. And it's always amazing to me how the Holy Spirit plays into, even though I may not know what the scripture actually is going to be used in a context, it always works out. And it especially has done that um, this morning because I chose to go with uh, a scripture that was not scheduled for today uh, in, in our own. Lectionary. So it is Psalm 67. It's a psalm that will sound very familiar to you. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly. And guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. And the land will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us. All the ends of the earth will fear him. <clears throat> You're probably wondering, well, what can you get out of that, right? God's blessings. That's what Psalm 67 is actually about. And God blesses us so that we may point people towards salvation, to God. The shining of God's face is seen in deliverance, redemption, and salvation. And here in Psalm 67, we are invited to praise God, not just as a congregation, but as the nations and all the peoples. This is a world-encompassing invitation that was given to Israel and has been given to us to pass out and share among all the peoples. John Piper wrote a book called Finishing the Mission, and in it he recalls that according to Psalm 67, God's purpose is to be known and praised and feared among all the peoples of the earth. This is why he created the world, why he chose Israel, why Christ died, and why mission exists. Mission exists because the knowledge of God, the praise of God, the enjoyment of God, and the fear of God does not exist among the nations. I admit I, I would take a little exception to that, uh, I would say some of the peoples, some of the nations, but there's a good many people out there that do believe in Jesus, that do believe that God blesses them. And I believe that God blesses us with purpose in mind for each one of us and for every church. There is a purpose. God designed us to have a relationship with God, to talk to God, to pray, to worship, and just to love God, because that's what God really wants, is our love and our willingness to spread His name, the salvation and redemption through Jesus Christ to whoever we have the opportunity to do that. Verse 2 says to us that we were created so we can experience his love of us. God wants to be known. And that is the mission of the church as we hear it in Mark 16. I think you'll know this one. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to 
God can be worshipped by all who love God. God wants us to look up to him and to praise God for all he has done. When we use the word fear in the scriptures, it's, it's a word that's a hard to translate into English, but it's not fear like I'm scared of something. It's an awestruck respect. It, it is knowing that you can give respect to the ultimate authority. That, that is what Jesus and God want from us. In Scripture, we hear over and over and over again that it is the responsibility of both human and divine monarchs to meet basic human needs, especially food. Can you even stop and think for a minute how many times you hear eating or food in, in Scripture? All the way from the beginning to the end. And, and one of the most important ones that we hear about is at the Last Supper that we continually do over and over, not just at church, but in our home when we break bread with one another. We can bless each other and ask Jesus to be there. And we have communed with God. So it's, uh, food is a real important thing throughout Scripture. So in this season of Easter, it's wonderful to be reminded that the resurrection of Jesus constitutes a call to mission. We are sent out to all the nations to share God with all peoples. You wouldn't think that this was a mission from God, but I think it is fellowship. Rejoice, shout with joy. You don't usually do that just by yourself. You're doing that when you're out with someone else or you're at home, your family's there, and you're having fun about with for some reason, or you've received news that you're going to be a great grandmother, and so you're bouncing around and having a good old time. But you're not doing it by yourself. You're doing it with others. And that's part of why we have church is we need fellowship with fellow <coughs> believers, people who know what we believe in, know what's expected, know what the life of Christ is about. And so fellowship not only helps you in relationships, but it helps you in your own faith and in your walk with Jesus Christ. So it's important that people with the same belief thoughts can gather together. All of the religions that believe in God, we can all be right here in this building right now and worship together because that's the major thing. You believe in God. You believe that God is the divine leader, the divine Christ. God is just, it's just so awesome, it's amazing. And God does want us to acknowledge and enjoy how he is really a part of each one of us. Right here in our heart and soul, God wants you to spend time, whether it's two minutes in the morning, and I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Uh, you get those two minutes in the morning to be just with God. You don't have to say much. Just think and let God know how much you love him. God wants our life to be part of his life. And we can do that in our praise and our worship. And God believes in ministry. God blesses and God helps the earth with the harvest. John Calvin in the commentary on Psalms, commented on verse 4 that it is about bestowing benefits. So every benefit which God bestowed upon his ancient people was, as it were, a light that's being held out before the eyes of the peoples. It's there, this light, to attract attention so that these nations that are created by God will 
see the light and come to God. And the idea here is God bestows each and everything, our breath, our sight, our hope, is all bestowed upon us through blessings of God. So what are we supposed to do? God's given us all this great stuff. We have to entrust God. We have to give back to God everything that you and I produce, make, or manufacture. Whatever comes from our hands, we are to give back to God for God's service. When God gave us this earth to use, it's been a long time, we weren't there, but it's still in our care. It came to us as a trust. So God was trusting us to trust in Him. In Genesis 1 and 9, in trusting all that has been created to our care, God asks that we be fruitful, we spread over the earth, and we multiply on it. God entrusted us to work and to have relationships. We are entrusted in financial things like tithing, using our abilities, our gifts, the opportunities and challenges that we receive. God has given you an opportunity to be skillful and to use the opportunities in trust and faith. God wants to be accepted and respected. That little word here, remember his awesomeness, his acceptance, his respect. God wants to be the ultimate authority to whom everyone in the world will listen to. And when God blesses us, it should lead us to be a better witness to the world. I don't know who gets the credit, but somebody famous said that you know, people shouldn't have to read the Bible, they should just see your actions and know what the Bible is. So they can learn it from you without ever having to read it. And we need to think about being that kind of Christian everywhere, especially when we're in public or when we're in the church and we're taking care of one another. You know, God gives us this material wealth that we have for the sake of the world's spiritual wealth. Can you? See how you do that? When you donate to different organizations, you donate to the church, you get out there and you help people, you are leading them, the world that is in need, to spiritual worship. And God blesses his church with all of the riches for the sake of reaching others. And that includes the people, there are many people in our own neighborhood of this church. Within a block, if you, you know, cordoned off the whole block, I you probably had at least a hundred people that do not, on a daily basis, recognize God or recognize Christ as their Savior. So we've got a whole mission field within, you know, a, a mile walk, and that's something we need to remember. And you're uncomfortable frequently talking about God. So if you are, I, I suggest you need to have a little more Bible reading and a little more prayer and just accept that this is something God asked you to do. And you know, when your dad says, get that hammer and write, you're going to do it. When your mom says, oh no, sonny, you're going to all okay, mom. So you're listening to mom and dad with a little bit of fear, even though you're 80 years old. You could do the same thing with God. Listen to what God has to say to you. And, you know, it is a pervasive concern more than 
praise and worship God, God's blessings, to enjoy God and allow God to enjoy us, to be entrusted into God, to put our faith and our love right there with God as God has done to us in many, many ways. And to have discipleship, respect, and awe with our Lord Jesus Christ, with his Father, and with the Holy Spirit. Now today, again, the Holy Spirit is working for us. We have our little mission thing that comes every week. And it says, as you walk in faith this week, consider taking the following acts to welcome others into the circle of God's grace. Meet your neighbors and invite them to enjoy a meal together. Work through your church to plan an immigrant welcoming dinner. Lift up in prayer those who seek asylum and those who would turn them away. Prepare food from a culture that is new to you and share with friends. I did not know that that was in here. That's your homework. Take that out, put it on your mirror when you brush your teeth, read it and say, I'm going to do one of these things. Or I'm going to do it a little bit differently. And however you choose to do it, with prayer, you will know that that is the right way. That that is the way God would like you to do it. Stop you bow your head in prayer. Precious God, may we follow the vision of Psalm 67. May we accept the divinely willed blessing for us, for all peoples, and all nations. May we be encouraged to accept the age-old challenge of the justice of universalism. Amen.